certainly the, the testimonies this morning and the prayer requests. God is always in the business of, of answering our prayers, uh -huh. even when we think that from our own human perspective that we may have given up. And so, I, you know, I, I love the fact that on Sunday morning we're willing to share uh, what God has laid up on our hearts, the testimonies, the prayer. And uh, I know it's been often said that we are the prayingest church we've ever encountered. I, I'd have to agree with you. Um, I don't think there's, there's too much that gets by this congregation because we're all willing to share what's going on in our everyday lives and the people that we care about. Um, and so I just praise God for that. Thank you for your testimony. And and uh, it's like Jimmy said, may, may we have the boldness uh, and the willingness to go forward and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and not to not to be ashamed of that. So absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, thy word. We thank you for Jesus, we thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for the truth of the gospel. And, Lord, we praise the fact that we're here, that we can celebrate freely uh, without being in, uh, encumbered, Heavenly Father. Um, we thank you, Lord, that thy word is true. We pray, God, that you would bless every member here as we uh, teach the word of the Lord. Of the Lord. Bless the servant. And bless the message this morning, Lord. And we pray, Heavenly Father, if there's someone that knows thee not as Savior or that simply needs a closer walk with thee today, Heavenly Father, that we will find that mm -hmm. take heart at this place and at this time. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this morning we're going to talk about um, a subject that is often perhaps not overlooked, but it's often um, found to be a difficult subject to talk about in and among churches, and that's the reality and the consequences of hell. Mm. Okay. Uh, many pastors choose not to take that approach because they are offended. They are afraid that they may offend those in the congregation. Right. Because many times they'll say, well, God, God is a God of love. And God can never send anyone to hell. He would never allow that. Well, they're true. that's true on both accounts. Yes, God is a God of love. Amen. And it's the choices that we choose because we have freedom of choice to either accept Christ right. or deny him. Amen. So... If we choose to remain in our sin, and if we choose to choose to if we choose the path of death versus the path of life, and not being willing to accept Christ as Lord of our lives, that choice is what sends us to hell. Right. right. Man. Okay. And the Bible is very clear on that. So, as followers of Christ, we're commanded to share the full counsel of God's word, even when the truth is difficult to share. Yeah. Yeah. So one such reality is in fact the reality of hell, a subject that can be very uncomfortable, yet it is essential for understanding the seriousness of sin and the holiness of God and the urgency of preaching and teaching salvation to the lost. Yeah. Jesus himself spoke about hell, warning us of its dangers and urging us to choose the path of life as opposed to the path of death. Amen. So we're going to talk about what the Bible has to say about hell, its purpose, and what it means for us. Okay? First of all, hell as we understand it, the Bible is very descriptive. It is, in fact, a place of torment. The Bible tells us in Mark 9.43, it's a place of fire and darkness because it's described in the scripture as a place of unquenchable fire and outer darkness 
And then as stated in Matthew 25, 30, where there will in fact be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These vivid images, they convey the extreme suffering and despair of those people that are separated from God. They're going to experience darkness that they never could possibly have imagined. Think of your worst nightmare that you may have had as a child growing up and multiply that nightmare into the thousands and you will not even come close to the reality and the horror that hell will have for those that choose to go there. Okay? Mm. It is a place of eternal punishment. Hell is not temporary. The Bible tells us in Matthew 25, 46, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So the punishment of hell is eternal with no possibility of escape right. or relief. It is also a place of separation. Separation from God. The most terrifying aspect of hell is not just the physical torment, but the spiritual separation from God. Amen. The Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the, from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So in hell there is no access to God's love, there is no access to God's grace, and there is absolutely no access to God's mercy. Amen. You've chosen that path. Mm. At that time for you, mm. it's too late. Mm. The curtains have been drawn. The door has been closed. That great gulf that is now fixed, you're separated from God for eternity. There's no turning back. We all, we all know too well the story of rich man and Lazarus in Luke 6, 19 to, through 31. Jesus pictures or paints an actual picture. This is not metaphorical. This is not some allegory, some parable that we're trying to reflect upon. But Jesus Christ is naming Lazarus, a specific individual. He's outlining what is to take place, as the Bible illustrates, between the separation of righteousness and the wicked in the places that they will go to upon death. So the Bible tells us the rich man is in torment, he is separated from Lazarus by the great gulf that is fixed, highlighting the finality of one's eternal destination. Mm. There's no turning back. This is the manifestation of God's justice, the finality of it. This is the manifestation of God's holiness and his wrath. Why? Because God cannot look upon sin. Amen. Hell exists because God is holy and God is just. Sin is a direct offense against God's holy nature. His justice requires that sin is to be punished. In Romans 2, 5, and 6, take heed. It explains, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasure up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render every man according to his deeds. So Amen. at the end of our story, we're either going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ or if we choose not to accept Christ, we're going to stand before God at the great white throne judgment. Amen. One or the other. You'll have to make that choice. Then we talk about the righteous judgment of God, as I just alluded to, and we, we, we find that, if you want to turn with me, in Revelation 20, 11 through 15. that describes the final judgment where those names who are not found written in the book of life, they are in fact cast into the lake of fire. This judgment, this judgment is just, it is righteous, 
And it's affirming that God's justice will be fully realized. So the Bible tells us, starting in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. Mm. And the Bible tells us in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Take heed, in verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's no mistake here. There's no mention of words. This is the final judgment. There's no what if scenario. This is what will happen. This is a foreshadowing of things that must be if you've chosen the wrong path. Because this is the place of accountability. The decisions you chose not to make because hell serves as a stark reminder that our choices in life have eternal consequences. Once we have passed from life unto death, there is no turning back. Once the clouds break open and we see Christ coming down in his power and glory to gather the elect, there's no turning back. Jesus warned repeatedly about the dangers of sin and the reality of hell, urging people to repent. Matthew 10, 28 states, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Yes. So this leads us to the necessity of repentance. So yes, we recognize that hell is real. We recognize that without Christ, this is what will happen. This is a foreshadowing of things to come. But it also, it also, praise God, helps us to realize the necessity of repentance. As we read in 2 Peter 3, 9, it is not God's desire for anyone to perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. Hell underscores the importance of the turning away from sin and turning toward God. In other words, it's a wake-up call to take seriously the offer and the seriousness of salvation. Seek him while he may be found. Amen. The Bible tells us that my spirit will not always strive with man. There may come a turning point in your life if you are without God because you have grieved the Holy Spirit so much mm. that his spirit may no longer strive with you. Mm. The Bible tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No man can come to God unless he's drawn, drawn to God by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. But if that Spirit is taken away, mm. right. and you're no longer drawn to, the, drawn to the holy place of repentance and acceptance of Jesus Christ, for you it may be too late. Oh, right. We also find, number three, the nature of hell. Hell is a place of conscious suffering and torment. You have an acute awareness of everything going on around you. We find that in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke 16, 19 through uh, 31, it shows that the rich man was fully aware of his suffering, his past life, and the separation from God. This indicates that hell is not a place of mere unconsciousness. We're not in purgatory awaiting trial but it, it is a place of consciousness of ongoing, relentless torment. Mm. The Bible tells us in 22 through 24 of the, of the same chapter. 
And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes and being a torment and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in the bosom. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and kill my tongue. For I am tormented in these flames. He realized far too late that hell was a place of regret and remorse. A place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. The pain is so intense. You're grinding your teeth. You're gritting your teeth. You're in anger. You're cursing God. It's a place where you'll never escape. The flames are licking at your body all around. You're feeling everything. We've seen, we have seen videos of people on fire, and we can only imagine the horror that they're going through as they're experiencing that before they expire. Well, imagine that scenario over and over and over and over and over again, living on eternity. This phrase is emphasized several times in Jesus' teaching. It represents, and that's in Matthew 8, 12, and then also 22, 13, because it represents the deep regret and regret and angel, uh, excuse me, the deep regret and anguish that people in hell will experience, knowing that they have lost forever the opportunity for salvation. We also realize, or the rich man helped us realize through Jesus' teaching, that there is a plea. He knew what he was experiencing. But there was a plea not only for relief for himself, but also for someone to warn his brethren. That highlights a sense of regret that accompanies hell. Because there was a clear recognition that he missed that opportunity and the irreversible nature of his condition. So he pleaded with Lazarus, have someone go tell my brethren. But we know what happened. If they believe not the Moses and the prophets, mm -hmm. nor will they believe someone as though he is raised from the dead. Yep. Okay? But you know what? Praise God, there's good news. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. we don't have to live in despair. There is a way of escape from hell. And that's because Jesus is the only Savior. Hallelujah. And through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, because he came to seek and to save that which was lost, saving us from that under, the under penalty of sin, which in fact is hell. In John 3, 16, read aloud with me, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus' death and resurrection provides the only way of escape from the judgment of hell. John 14, 6. And how, how do we know this? Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me or by me. Amen. So salvation from hell comes as a result of faith that we have in Jesus Christ and his atoning work and the blood that he shed on the cross. So then we have the call to repentance and faith. Re repentance as a response and our acknowledgement of what Christ has done for us on the cross. You know, Christ began his ministry with a call to repentance, did he not? We find in Matthew 4, 17, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Those are the first words that were uttered. So repentance, what is repentance? Repentance is turning away. It is an about face. It is not just, it is not just an admission of guilt. It is not just a confession and the asking of forgiveness, but there has to be an edification and then a realization that, Lord, you have forgiven me, but now I must follow in your footsteps. I have to turn it about face, and I, because I'm a new creature in Christ, mm. I have to now show evidence of that 
through Jesus Christ, that I have turned the about face, and I'm, I'm reaching toward the mark. I'm seeking to be like Christ because that is our mission. If we're not seeking to be like Christ, then how, therefore, can we be an example for others to follow in his footsteps rather than being a stumbling block? Mm -hmm. Amen? So we're living a life of faith. So as we know, living a life for Christ means we have an immediate transformation. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, I knew that something drastic had immediately changed in my life. Amen. I felt a joy I had never felt before. And as we go forward and as we go in Christ, we know what sin looks like. We know that, Lord, this is not the path that you want me on. And so immediately when we are tempted, we know the right thing to do, and that is to turn away from it completely and don't stare it in the face because we don't have any business going there. Oh, no. Amen. We are to avoid that at all costs. If you see it, avoid it, walk away from it. Don't be tempted. Don't entertain even for one second the thought of allowing that sin to take hold because all it takes is it's a tiny wedge to for Satan mm. to gain a foothold. And you don't, you don't want him to say, I've got you. Amen. Because that's when the demons of hell will come forward and try to take over your life. Our lives should reflect a commitment to Christ and our witness should be warn others of the dangers of hell and the hope we have found in Christ Jesus. So with that, there is the urgency, the urgency of the message. There is the need for evangelism. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a great commission. Understanding the reality of hell should compel us to share the gospel urgently. Jesus commanded us in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. Oh, in case you want to, in case you feel like it, no. if you're having a good day, okay, no. no, whatsoever I have commanded you. Amen. So we must, we don't have a choice. We must share the message of salvation with, with a world that is lost and heading very quickly toward eternal damnation. Our mission is to rescue the perishing. Mm. Yes. In Jude 1, 22 and 23, it exhorts us, and the Bible tells us, and some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That tells me right there, buddy, you've been saved, but just by the skin of your teeth. Yes. You, you, you slid into heaven's glory. Hallelujah. You know, at the last minute. This world is not mine. You know, right before that deathbed, you came to Christ. Well, hallelujah. We're going to count that as salvation. The angels of heaven. Praise the Lord. Even if it's in the final seconds of you breathing your last breath, if you confess, God's going to save you. Yes. You think about what happened with the thief on the cross. Yeah. What Christ did for him. Amen. For me. So our love for others should drive us to warn everyone about the dangers of hell and lead them to Christ. Yes. And then the reality of hell should help us to shape the way that we live our lives. Why? Because, praise God, we're now able to humbly come before the throne of grace, recognizing that, in, that Christ in due season saw fit to reach down from the portals of glory and we were drowning in our sin and he reached over and pulled us up and brought us back on the solid rock not because we deserved it but because of his unyielding mercy and love the Bible tells us in Colossians 3 1 and 2 if you be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the throne of and by the hand of God, set your affection on things above yes. and not on things of this earth. Amen. 
We are called as believers to live holy lives. You know, it's important that we keep ourselves in check. We have to. Not just when we feel like it, but I'm telling you, every moment, every hour of every day, people watching, if you have that walk with Christ, if you are doing something that you know is not appropriate, that goes against God's holy word, the Holy Spirit will speak that to you. You feel it. In the moment of that, in, in that moment, in that moment, we ask God to come down and to provide a way of escape so we're not tempted. So we're to set our affections on things above and not things of the earth. The Bible tells us in closing, in 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16, but as ye which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner, in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, yes. for I am holy. Hallelujah. So in conclusion, hell is a real and terrifying place. Yes. Its reality shall lead us to a profound reflection and action. It reminds us of the seriousness of sin, the justice of God, and the urgency of God's message. We must remember, it's not God that sends us to hell. Right. It's God's desire that everyone should come to repentance. Yes. Right? Yes, ma'am. To avoid eternal salvation from him. And that as believers, we're called to respond in truth and in faith and repentance and in passion for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So... Because of this, let, let, us, let us be moved in a tremendous way. Let us define love and compassion and the urgency to warn others about the reality of hell mm. and to offer them the, the hope of eternal life through faith in Jesus. You know, our lives are to be a testimony through, and it's only through the saving grace of God that we may faithfully carry out the mission of leading others to Christ. Why? Before it's too late. Wow. Let us close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. We thank thee for the truth of thy word. Yes. Even when it challenges us, help us to understand mm -hmm. the seriousness of sin and the reality of hell. Give us a heart of compassion for the lost and the boldness to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and the urgency of doing so. May our lives reflect daily. Mm -hmm. moment by moment thy holiness and maybe may we be faithful in pointing others to the saving grace yes. of Jesus Christ in his name we pray Amen, Amen.